Um, so when you hear that idea, designing and writing interactive texts, what do you think that means? So what's writing? You know some of the words. What's writing? Hmm? Well, what does it mean to write? I mean, what's the what do you, what's the process you go through when you write? Putting thoughts on paper. You're from the 17th century, <laughs> right? So putting, getting your thoughts and somehow converting your thoughts to words. Do you write with pictures? So or visuals or video. So when I say writing, it means a lot of words, but also all those other means. So it's writing or creating. Um, so you know what sort of writing might mean? What's designing? So you're communication and information design <laughs> majors, right? So you must be interested in what in designing, creating. So designing is ideas, or what's the what does it mean to design? What's the practice of designing? What do you do when you design? Yeah, me. You maybe imagine what it's going to look like. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's not the idea; it's how yeah. you're going to present it. Right. It's designing and think about how your audience or those who read it might interact with it. There's that word interact. What does interact mean? Hmm? Okay, we're interacting here. Um, what's, do you have, have you ever used an interactive text? What would an interactive text look like? What do you think it would be? Have you ever used one? So a link is a link, but what would the text be? You're right. <laughs> Interactive texts have links, okay? And what makes it interactive is that it has a link. You can click on it and something happens. Is a book interactive? Okay, but how about a printed book? Can you interact with it? Yes, no. No opinion. No, yes, no opinion. How do you interact with a book? Precisely, right? It's got a technique of flipping pages. Do you have to go page one, page two, page three, page four? <laughs> Why should you? It makes sense to whom? Why would you presume that reading a book, page one, page two, page three, page four, is going to make more sense than reading a book differently? Hey, designing and writing interactive texts? Yep. There we go. Because the author designed it that way. Okay, and so if you have total faith in the author, that the author is brilliant, and that the author knows what you, the reader, wants, then yeah, follow the sequence. Have you ever opened up, we're talking about what an interactive text is. Have you ever read a book? Not page one through page end. Oh, have you ever read it? That's like right. That's different. That's it. Have you ever read a book in other than the order in which the author presented it? You did. You do. Why? You read the last page before the first page. Why? You're breaking the rules. Why would you do that? Because it makes more sense to you, the reader, and you, the reader, are, it's you. It's about you, the reader, not about the writer. So if you want it to be about the reader, then let the reader do what they want. Um, do you ever look at the table of contents and say, oh, I only want to read chapter four? Like of a textbook, not a f novel. Yeah. Of course. Do you ever look at the index first like if you're doing a paper you look in the index to find something you're interested in you zoom in to the part of the book so you are familiar users of an interactive text technology called the book okay so how about other texts 
texts means a corpus or a body of materials, might be words, might be pictures, might be video, might be anything. Have you ever used an interactive text before that other than a printed book where you, the reader, the watcher, the consumer, we'll call it reading, you, the reader, choose your own adventure, choose your own sequence of viewing, watching, reading, etc. So, um, what's that thing called? Um, the internet. Anybody ever use the internet? Of course you have, right? So you run a search on in the internet. You run a search on Google. It returns a set of queries. And you always click the first link? No. You look at them and make a decision. You interact with the text that Google created for you. Okay, so when you run a query on Google, it creates a text for you. It's called a search page or query results page. It makes that text for you and you look at it. And then you interact with it. Okay, you don't, Google orders them in a sequence. Like why? How do they decide what sequence to put the links in? Most important, the most popular, the most money. Actually, you don't know. They do it by an algorithm that they won't tell you. Okay, it's proprietary, and they do it for their own purposes. Um, the happier they make you, the more money they will make, but there's a balance between making you less happy and making more money. Um, so if they can get more money for a higher page link, an ad, or something like that, they'll put that up there, even though they think it's going to make you unhappy if you click on it. Okay, so imagine the Google God actually knows what's going to make you happy, but they balance it out. So you're, you're used to using these interactive texts. Um, come on, stop that. And what this class is going to, I was just playing with my recording. And what this class is about is how to design and then write what we're going to call an interactive text. Um, you've, it's going to be a lot of words, um, but also pictures, videos, whatever you, you decide sort of you want to put in. Um, and we're going to do it in software. Okay, if you, anybody learned HTML? HTML, never touched it? HTML, HTML, HTML. Okay, good, or not. Um, we're going to use what's called markdown or what some people think of as punctuation. So you're used to writing words and you kind of learned about commas and periods and parentheses and semicolons. Those are not really words, those are punctuation. They're like little code that don't have meaning associated with them, but they convey a message to your reader and they control the way that the text is displayed, sort of. Um, if you have an iPhone, maybe a Droid tube, and you click a period, you can have it set so it automatically leaves a space. Or no, what is it? You hit space and it puts a period in and then a space for the end of the sentence. Pardon? Double click space, right? It puts a period in. So that's sort of like a way of using punctuation through code or through action. Um, we're going to talk about and teach how to um, do that in a program called TiddlyWiki, which is TiddlyWiki, anybody? Nobody, right? Okay. Heard of it? No. Um, it's legendary on this campus only because I'm part of the cult of TiddlyWiki. Um, it's an odd name for a piece of software. Um, but what it does is of all the things that I've looked at in a long time of looking, it's the platform that allows um, people to learn how to design and write interactive texts quickly and sort of ramp up to something that's pretty sophisticated without a lot of HTML work. You still have to use some of the periods and you'll hear it. It's double braces, double square brackets, double angle brackets, and that's about it. And some other stuff. Um, but you'll be able to write pretty robust looking texts fairly quickly. Um, the way the class is organized, you, you see it's kind of weird. Um, I have a section that meets from 11 to 12 on Wednesdays. That's you guys. Um, and we are going to meet in another room after today. I have a section that meets from 9 to, 9 to 10 on Wednesdays. Um, and then from 10 to 11 on Wednesdays, I'm going to record on Zoom a video meeting, like a, 
a video conference and you're welcome to attend the, that meeting if you don't have another class from 10 to 11. I'm going to record um, a conversation about hypertext with the guy who invented Tiddlywinky. His name is Jeremy Rustin. Um, and he uh, lives in um, UK and Oxford, Cambridge. I can never remember. I think he's in Oxford. Um, and we're going to have this conversation for an hour on Wednesdays from 10 to 11. We'll record it. And if you can come live and engage with us or you can watch it later. And it forms the sort of the lecture for the class. So you have a one hour in class experience. You have a one hour video to watch that will get made every week and will begin to incorporate your responses and your work and we'll talk about your stuff. Um, the students in the early section and the students in this section will be in the same sort of space. Um, plus I have 15 graduate students in the information design and technology program that are in an online class and they're going to share this, our space. And I think there's a couple of students in the undergraduate online section as well and they're going to share the space and I'm running this as what's called, an, have you ever heard of a MOOC, a massive online open course? Well, that's not what this is. This is a SOOC, a small online open course. So people from around the world who find this interesting will join our course and share our space, and they'll produce work and we'll comment on it. So um, it's kind of a different kind of course um, than I've ever experienced. Uh, I call it a learning community. Um, and I think of everybody who's a member of the learning community, you're a member by virtue of signing up for the course at SUNY Poly. Um, others are members because they just volunteer and they can come and play with us. Um, and um, it's a learning community with, I'm a member because I've been hired to sort of teach those classes and I decided to run this open course and Jeremy's a member because he's doing what he's doing. And, there's this sort of active open space, open source community out there around Sydney Weekly, and we're going to get some of those folks who are going to join our group. Somebody joined yesterday from New Zealand. So we've got the guy from New Zealand in there already. I, and somebody else joined from, I can't remember, I think he's from Germany. So we're going to have a, there's a lot of Europeans who are sort of using the software. So we're going to have some people from around the world in our space. Um, the sessions from nine to 10, and 11 to 12 will be, this is probably a lot of my talking, I won't do that very much. Though they're mostly organized as workshops, where if you, you know, I'll present some material, um, and then we'll spend time looking at your stuff and commenting and critiquing on it and figuring out what's working, what's not working. You are invited and more than welcome to attend from nine to 10 if you want. You can come to the 10 to 11 stream. I don't know exactly how that's gonna work. and. And then 11 to 12 is sort of set aside as primarily for your time, but others may come in and invade your space as well. Um, the the um, course begins sort of with a, so I wouldn't say steep, but not a straightforward and easy software acquisition project. In other words, you have to get some software going and you have to get some stuff downloaded. And um, um, I don't know if you, did you get my, messages this morning saying to bring your computer to class you, you didn't check your you don't check your email like I just checked it. and you just saw it yeah. yeah so um so yeah you're supposed to bring your device to class but you can use these if you don't do if you don't have do you, anybody have a laptop with them today nobody has a laptop oh that's sucky. um So you should turn these on and we'll have to wait for them and we'll see if we can get stuff to work here. Um, oh, if I had noticed that, I would have had you turn them on in the beginning. So while those are booting up, you should log in with your SitNet ID. It doesn't matter. You should go where you um, are most happy. This whole course is about your happiness. Um, 